Namaste. Welcome to Filter Coffee with Rajesh Govind Rajalu, and that is myself on the Desi platform Vayam. And today is a very important day because our beloved Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji has used the Vayam platform today. And uh, uh, Ankita ji, who is along with us today, has is an expert on the Northeast. I've been reading and closely following her presence on the television, on the internet, in YouTube, and the number of articles that she has written, and she is very wise, extremely wise for her age. And it makes me think that I should get younger once again and try to understand how somebody can be so intelligent and wise, and that too in the right perspective. Today she is here to talk about, you know, she is giving us a series. of uh, talks it is the series on the tradition of the ramayan in purvottar bharat which is the northeastern part of bharat varsha or india and uh, this is the third episode and uh, she is promised to make it as interesting as possible today it's on uh, kangli park manipur manipur that we know of is a state uh, which is uh, on the other side of bangladesh we must remember that bangladesh was very much part of india at one point of time so we need not feel so very distant when we talk and think of manipur correct so i am so happy that uh, you know ankita is a phd she moves uh, around the northeast with the effortless ease and she had recently spent a lot of time in manipur and other places therefore our scheduled uh, online program had to be you know revised and taken to two weeks away but nevertheless manipur is a very interesting and very important state where political changes have taken place at an enormous pace over the last 10 years and uh, ramayan is very much alive in manipur live and kicking in manipur and i would also Uh, Jankita ji, to talk a little bit about the Vaishnavite uh, sampradaya of Manipur, because Lord Rama is uh, an incarnation of uh, Lord Vishnu and nothing else. And also, I wish to share a recent trip that Jagannathan uh, Sundar Ramachandran and myself undertook to the Kaveri Delta region of Tamil Nadu. We had been to the Vadu Rama Temple. the best looking uh, rama bronze in the whole world is in that temple and we had also been to the kumbakonam rama swami temple where again it's a fantastic uh, icon of rama and his uh, family in fact uh, uh, we have decided that we'll go back to the same places in 23 and go back to the same place in 24 also in the second half of 24 Mr Sundar Ramachandran has made a, an offering and we have agreed to travel with him two more times to the same temples in order to ensure that we get a good government and ram rajya in india once more so ankita ji i want to really ask you how is it that you are able to manage so much of information in the northeast simple we are only told of the northeast in two ways one is we have been educated in our schools and the other is the newspaper education or the television or media education the first tells us that the northeast the seven sisters of india that is how they call them and they say they have distinct identity and they have nothing culturally connected with india at all Yes. and they are more connected to some other region of the world than india a and b when we look at the politics and when we look at all that one side tells us that it is either tribal and the other side tells us that it is completely abrahamic or christian and never and until <clears throat> we came into this uh, program with ankita ji most of us were not really aware about the various uh, uh, hindu traditions which were present in the northeast just as how we could have a in tamil nadu 
we use uh, the word kovil for temple i'm sure the northeastern states would also had a similar word like yes. mandir or something else mm. by using the word ha huh? namghar also in assam it's called namghar in assam namghar. temples ha in temple. assam hmm and this is very simple that just because it is called kovil it does not mean that it is not a temple just because we call uh, parvati as uh, malai magal that is the daughter of the mountain and lakshmi as alai magal the daughter of the sea and saraswati as kalai magal kalai means craft magal means daughter we have clearly understood it does not mean that they are very different from the lakshmi parvati or saraswati who are revered and prayed to nationally i am sure similarly the uh, indians of the northeast or purvottar bharat must have also felt the same about all these deities just because uh, the deity is called so and so in a different language it does not mean it's a different culture or a different tradition and uh, this after listening to ankita on a couple of occasions i have come to understand that the northeast is very much part of india and they cannot be called as seven sisters of india but seven sisters of the northeast because they are yes. already part of india they are not part of some sark countries or anything they are very much part of india and it's so sad that the ignorance of the earlier administrators and the selfish nature of the colonial administrators has caused enormous harm to the people of the northeast and extinguished large parts of the tradition making the and has also made them feel guilty about their own past and taken them on to a new path unfortunately some of the anthropologists who worked in the northeast calling themselves as participants have done great harm and uh, sorry to say i was told that there's an anthropologist who had married a very young girl and he called himself a participant those days about 60 years ago 55 to 60 years ago and later gave up on her and went on to lead another life so such liberties were used with the sanction of the authorities of the day and had been misused in the northeast and thanks to young scholars like dr ankita that we are getting to learn more about the people of the northeast the temples and the culture of the northeast and may this tribe increase and may people learn more about the northeast and we should also congratulate ankita for becoming a professor now and she has a lot of responsibilities on her shoulder and i'm sure she is going to produce remarkable books i'm really looking forward for a nice uh, novel based on mythology and history from the northeast connected with the culture and i'm sure it will be a best seller thank you so much ankita ji and i really require i'm looking to like everybody else today i'm looking forward to listening to your uh, story connected with the the ramayan in manipur please i welcome you once again <laughs> on behalf of the friends at paranda club thank you please go ahead thank you ha huh. thank you namaste namaste rajesh ji once again and uh, namaste to everyone listening to this podcast today uh, thank you so much again rajesh ji and entire uh, varanda club team for inviting me to speak uh, on a topic that is so much emotionally close to my heart and mind and uh, after having covered assam and mizoram we would now be going to talk about the tradition of the ramayan in kangley park or present day manipur uh, now at the very outset uh, i would like to point out the fact that because rajesh ji has already introduced uh, uh, in great detail about the northeast and the problems that it has been facing so in the very beginning i would like to point out the fact that uh, unlike the other states of the northeast in manipur the ramayan tradition represents a beautiful blend or what i would say a commingling of the story of uh, shri ram with the gaudiya vaishnava parampara of the mighty hindus so uh, why is this so 
and what has been the itihas behind this what are the different factors that have played a key role in preserving and sustaining this tradition over the centuries what is the story of vaishnavism in manipur and how and uh, in what circumstances it came to be assimilated with the ramayan uh, so ram shri ram as an avatar of vishnu rajesh ji has already explained it beautifully so these are some of the basic areas of the topic under discussion today that i would be looking into with reference to a few traditional art forms of manipur storytelling methods and festivals of manipur which bring alive shri ram and various aspects uh, from his life this topic is very huge actually and therefore uh, you know instead of choosing to speak on the entire story of the ramayan prevalent in manipur i thought it would be more interesting and detailed uh, if the audience can be made to understand uh, the story which is not very different from the original valmiki ramayan through examples of different festivals and traditional forms of art prevailing in manipur Uh, i would now like to begin by talking about the history of manipur and manipuri literature that boasts of a, a very rich sanatan hindu heritage beginning from around the 10th century ad and even prior to that the manipuri version of the ramayan uh, with uh, with all its seven different cantos or uh, different chapters is an integral and inseparable part of this hindu heritage uh there was one famous raja of manipur uh, raja garib nivas who had entrusted one pandit angom gopi uh, he was also known by the name of shema singh moiramba with his assistance to compose the ramayan with a local complexion uh with a local complexion infused with various uh, traditional regional manipuri elements okay now i would briefly like to uh talk about the ancient hindu history of manipur because not many people here who are listening to this might be aware of the story which we need to look into in order to understand the ramayan parampara and its influence among the lives of the people in this region of the country uh now the ancient kingdom of manipur uh we need to recall that it was a neighbor and ally of the shan kingdom of upper burma called pong it was formed as a result of the coming together of several independent principalities under leadership of nongda lairen pakhangba uh, king nongda lairen pakhangba who belonged to the ningthoja clan or salai uh, salai is the manipuri word for clan so pakhangba uh, raja pakhangba belonged to the ningthoja clan there is a renowned mighty hindu scholar pandit n khelchandra singha uh who is of the opinion that the word mighty which eventually came to be used to refer to the people of the manipur valley uh, was originally applied only for the ningthojas now it was after the formation of the confederacy of the salais and its subjugation by the ningthojas that the word mighty or mite became the common nomenclature for all the people residing in the manipur valley commonly known to the outside world as mighty lepak and uh, poiren amthak saron pung manipur formed an important link culturally and otherwise between bharat on the one hand and southeast asia on the other and this is actually the missing link that we need to stitch together whenever we talk about the tradition of the ramayan prevailing in the southeast asian countries of indonesia thailand myanmar etc because you know it was through and from the northeastern part of bharat that the story of the ramayan traveled to these lands and it is really very unfortunate that while this beautiful tradition of the ramayan is a declining one in the northeast especially in the predominantly christian states of mizoram nagaland and meghalaya it is still thriving in southeast asia uh, well now again coming back to the history of manipur i was being asked by several people when i shared the poster uh, of today's talk uh, after looking at the poster of today's talk uh, they asked me why kangle park uh, 
like we, we did not know that this was the ancient name of present day Manipur. Yes, true. We still we still do not know so much of our own Itihas and especially when it comes to the Northeast. Uh, the ancient kingdom of Manipur was referred to as Kathe. By the Burmese, it was referred to as Mekhali by the Ahoms, Kanglebak, Sanalebak, or Metrabak. These are the names uh, that have been used to refer to the ancient kingdom of Manipur in a few historical texts, such as Panthoibi Khongul, Pombi Loaba, etc., written by several mighty Hindu scholars. Now, Kangle. Kangle in the Manipuri language means uh, dry, uh, a dry land facing scarcity of water. Uh, now, historically speaking, Manipur was witness to several droughts in the olden times. And this is also the case in the present times as well, especially in the Infall Valley. But not many people might be aware of this. Uh, I'm not talking about the hills here because they have... Uh, ample abundant availability of water but the scarcity of water is still a problem in the valley of Manipur. The famous Kangla fort of Imphal uh, which is also the center of many different uh, cultural functions and festivals. Uh, the Kangla fort is also inspired by this ancient name Kangle Pak and Pak means a town, a small town. Uh, now, with the gradual popularity of the Vaishnava Parampara in the Manipur Valley or present-day Imphal, during the reign of Raja Pamheba, Kangle Park soon came to be known as Manipur. Now, Manipur has uh, roots in the Sanskrit language. How? Mani means jewel and Pur means land. There is also a popular uh, Vedic belief uh, that the valley of Manipur was once submerged deep underwater. And it was only when uh, Shiva had uh, pierced a hill, the name of this hill was Chingnung Hook. When Shiva had pierced this hill Chingnung Hook with his Trishul, uh, it led to the creation of a hole. And this creation of a hole eventually helped to drain the water out and the valley finally became habitable with the availability of water. Now, as a mark of the celebration of this happy event, Shiva, together with Parvati and a host of other devis and devatas, performed a beautiful dance, uh, which is believed to have been the Lai Haroba dance form, which is still popular in Manipur. And... Uh, Bhagwan Vishnu was overwhelmed at the beauty of this land and Shiva's dance with Ma Parvati. He therefore sprinkled it with various precious uh, sparkling gems and uh, hence the name Manipur. So Mani meaning jewel, Pur meaning land. Now the worship of Vishnu in the form of a python or a snake uh, which is identified as Pakhangba in the mighty Hindu religious pantheon uh, has been prevalent among the people of Manipur since antiquity. Uh, in fact, the name of the district uh, Bishenpur or Bishnupur, which is hailed as the cultural and religious capital of Manipur, has been derived from uh, Bishnu or Vishnu. Uh, the Shakta cult of Madura is also widely prevalent in Manipur among different sections of the, the mighty Hindus. The travelogues of the Chinese Buddhist pilgrim Hyun Sung in the 7th century are also dotted with several references of Manipur in the context of the kingdom of Kamrup and the temple of Ma Kamakya. Uh, in the 15th century, Gaudiya Vaishnavism of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became immensely popular in Manipur because of the efforts of one Raja, one king, his name was Raja Bhagya Chandra, who along with his daughter Bimbavati Devi visited uh, an island, Nabadweep, and established a temple dedicated to Govinda or Krishna. And this strand of Bengal's Gaudiya Vaishnavism continues to influence the cultural life of the people of Manipur even today. The prime examples being the traditions Nata Sankirtana, Manuhar Sai, and Krishna Ras Leela. Ram Katha or Ramayan in Manipur, it is popularly known as Ram Katha. Ram Katha 
constitutes an integral part of the culture of, of the Manipur Valley. Uh, remember here that the valley in Manipur, it is a uh, majority, there are Hindus, the mighty Hindus, whereas the hill predominantly Christian. Uh, the worship of Sri Ram uh, in Manipur is said to have been patronized by Raja Pamheba, who is also worshipped as Vishnu even today by certain sections of the mighties. And Raja Pamheba is also credited with the construction of the Sri Ram and Sri Hanumanji temples in Manipur under the influence of the Ramanandi order of Vaishnavism. Later on, Manipur completely the influence of the Chaitanya variant of Vaishnava Parampara centered around the worship of Radha and Krishna. Now coming to the Manipuri Ramayana, uh, I have spoken about the influence of Bengal's Gaudiya Vaishnavism Parampara in Manipur. So the Manipuri version of the Ramayana or the Manipuri Ramayana literature leans heavily on the Bengali Krittivasi Ramayana composed by Krittivas. Based on the tradition of reciting and narrating stories uh, from both the Ramayana and the Mahabharata and as well as the Purans, uh, you know, there has been a strong influence, I would say, of the Ramayan Parampara prevalent in different parts of Assam on the Ramayan tradition of both Bengal and Manipur. The Manipuri versions of various stories from the Ramayana are adaptations from the Bengali Krittivasi Ramayana. And according to several Manipuri records also, such as uh, there is one book called uh, the, the Origin of Manipuri Storytelling and, it, and its Trends, uh, which has been prepared by the Manipuri Puranic Parishad, it has been clearly mentioned that an Assamese Brahmin named uh, Jiuram Sharma was taken to Manipur by Raja Bhagya Chandra. And it was under the initiative of Raja Bhagya Chandra, assisted by Jiuram Sharma, that the practice of reciting stories from the Ramayan, Mahabharat, and the Purans began in Manipur. The Manipuri version of the Ram Katha constitutes one among the many popular themes uh, of a number of, uh, what I would say, of a of another uh, influential traditional mass means like Wari Liba. Now, what is Wari Liba? Wari Liba is a form of traditional art of storytelling in Manipur, exclusively based on the life of Sri Ram. Other popular traditional modes of enacting different scenes from the Ramayana in Manipur, besides Wari Liba, include Pena Sakpa. Uh, who is a ballad singer accompanying himself on a one-stringed musical instrument called the penna. There is another uh, of art called Khongjampa, which is a form of narrative singing to the accompaniment of the pung or Manipuri Dholak. There is Lyric Thiba Haiba, which is a traditional art form of singing of texts with different interpretations and Jatra. Jatra is a traditional Manipuri theatre form. Now, Wari Liba as a narrative art form has evolved and associated itself with the tradition of recitation of Ram Katha in Manipur. There is a particular social and religious context associated with the evolution and development of Ram Katha and Wari Liba. Now, what is the meaning of Wari Liba? Wari in Manipuri language means a story. And Liba means to narrate, to tell, to tell uh, to the listeners, those who are listening, the audience. So, Wari Liba is a narrative art form from Manipur, as simple as that. Uh, although there are no extant uh, written documentations uh, of the origins and genesis of this art form, but it can be said with certainty that this tradition has been continuing through uh, oral uh, uh, through oral recitations uh, that have been passed on through several generations, and hence uh, the the genesis and evolution of this art form. You know, it, it leaves the space open for further debates and discussions since concrete evidences are still lacking in these matters. It is believed that Wari Liba as a form of narrative art of storytelling evolved during the uh, rule of Raja Khagemba. 
who ruled Manipur from 1598 to 1652 AD. But information regarding the exact style of this art form and the stories which were narrated through this art is still shrouded in obscurity. As I mentioned earlier, it was only during the reign of Maharaja Bhagya Chandra that Jiuram Sharma, uh, an Assamese Brahmin uh, from Tekhau, because Assam was referred to as Tekhau uh, back then by the people of Manipur. And this was in the year 1775 when Jiuram Sharma, uh, along with Raja Bhagya Chandra, introduced the art of narrating stories from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, the Ramayana and the Mahabharata and as well as the Puranas. And from then onwards, Wari Liba became a popular medium through which these texts came to be associated with the Vaishnava Parampara in Manipur. Now coming to the main crux of today's discussion, that is Wari Liba, I have taken up as an important medium for the transmission and popularization of the Ram Katha tradition or the Ramayan Parampara in Manipur. Variliba, as I just said, it is a narrative art form articulating different stories and episodes from the Ramayana, Mahabharata and the Puranas, but chiefly the Ramayana. A single narrator recites episodes from these texts through various mudras and abhangas and a well-modulated voice to evoke suitable rasa or sentiments among the audience. The narrator generally narrates the story in the local Manipuri language or the Maiti language, also known as Maiti Leon, Maiti Leon language. And he also uses relevant metaphors and imageries from the local context uh, while narrating the sequence of events so as to capture the minds of the audience. Uh, a little sprinkling of Sanskrit and Bengali slokas here and there is also to be found in this narration. Uh, there is one renowned Manipuri scholar, Elangba Nilakanta Singha. He has described the Wariliba tradition of Ramayan in Manipur uh, through these mm -hmm. words, and I would like to quote here. Uh, Wariliba constitutes an extremely popular medium of mass communication. The Warilibas narrated for days and nights the episodes of the Ramayan with gusto and creative imaginations, making people laugh, weep, and cry at the same time at the various at the various stages of the narrations. The character of the Ramayan in Manipur, under the impact of the Krittivasi Ramayan of Bengal, Adhyatmic tradition, and Yoga Vashisht Ramayan and colored by the regional and local touch of the Manipuri culture, became unforgettable creations in the context of Vaishnava Bhakti. The place of performance of Wari Liba, I will now come to this, the, the place where Wari Liba is performed in acting different episodes from the Manipuri Ramkatha, it is also very important to take note of while we are trying to understand the specific purpose narration of the story of Sri Ram. As I mentioned before, the tradition of the Ramayana in Manipur became immensely popular with the advent of Vaishnavism. And therefore, the religiosity that is associated with Wari Liba is very much evident from the space where it takes place. Wari Liba is usually performed during the months of Jeshtha. Uh, that is during May, June, it is known as Kalen in Manipuri language. And after the month of Jeshtha, it is performed during Kartikeya, that is during October, November, during the Diwali Bhayaduj celebrations. And mm. Kartikeya is known as uh, Mera. The month of Kartikeya is known as Mera in the local Manipuri language. And it is performed for the entire duration of the month at different parts of the state. The local Manipuri people, especially the followers of Vaishnavism, they throng the mandap where these narrations take place. The religious sanctity of Wari Liba that I'm trying to explain here, it is best reflected perhaps in the way in which a special ashran, ashran means a seat, a special seat is reserved for Hanuman, the bhakta of Sri Ram. We all know about Hanumanji. 
and his seat is placed right next to the seat of the narrator of wari liba near the stool where the text of the manipuri ramayan is kept wari liba is also performed on special occasions like marriage ceremony swasti puja uh, swasti puja is a form of puja which is performed among several communities of the manipuri maithi hindus on the sixth day after the birth of a child uh, in a home then it is also performed during nahutpa nahutpa or ear piercing ceremony of the child and even death anniversaries and there is a popular belief that by, by listening to episodes from the ramayana through the variba an infertile woman who has yet not been able to bear a child she can conceive and sometimes the narrations are performed on general gatherings for purposes of entertainment as well the narrator sits on a, a mat which is made of reed and locally available water hyacinth plant this mat is known as phak and there is a lyric phan a uh, lyric phan is a small table for keeping the manipuri ramayana uh there are pan kua pan kua means betel leaf and betel nut and uh, offerings of fruits vegetables and flowers to uh, shri ram which are known as hero kherang in the local manipuri language and an earthen diya or lamp are kept in front of the narrator the performances usually take place within the premises of a devasthana or a temple mandap as commonly understood in manipur is an extension of the temple where religious conglomeration uh, rituals dance music festivals associated with the sanatan hindu faith are performed another important characteristic feature of wari liba that i would like to mention is that it has still been able to preserve the beautiful guru shishya parampara of bharatiya culture uh, in the ancient times the young students they used to go to their teachers residence regularly and they stayed there for the entire period of their learning and understand this form of art there are no established schools or institutions for imparting training to students on this art form and the lessons they are generally imparted through close personal interactions by the teachers who themselves happen to be the narrators of wari liba and the mode of passing over of this art form and the story has been through oral traditions as i mentioned earlier and intense rigorous practice under their respective tutors uh, sometimes the students also see guidance from certain teachers who are well known for their knowledge in a particular khanda of the ramayan or a particular section of the ramayan so usually the practice has been that the learners go to several teachers for mastering this art form which continues uh, even when they become professional narrators the reason behind this uh, is that some narrators like uh, ojha kondumba uh, they are no more now they had a specialization in certain stories or episodes like practice among the mighty use of manipur till day to go to a senior guru especially for learning lyric oraiba now what is lyric oraiba reading the text of the ramayan loudly so oral reading of the ramayan that is known as lyric oraiba and this is a practice which is still prevalent among several mighty hindu families of manipur they go to a senior guru and uh, he he trains the the the, the young ones to uh, in in lyric oraiba that is to read the ramayan loudly and these gurus they know the inner core of narration of specific portions or stories from the ramayan and thus it is important to regularly visit them uh, for blessings and also for partaking of the knowledge uh, in the earlier times prominent narrators of wari liba ram katha tradition like uh, wahing bam ojha then uh, there was uh, gashik pam tombi etc they received special robes of honor 
which were known as Khamen Chakpa from the king's cognition of their talent. But no record for any permanent royal post of such a narrator has been found in the context of the kingdoms of Manipur, at least in the available historical records that I have sourced. Uh, basically, in this connection, it is worrying that one of the major factors for the flourishing and sustenance of this art form, the patronage of those Rajas of Manipur who embraced Vaishnavism. I have mentioned about the uh, Raja Bhagya Chandra in this context. Even the last king Manipur before, and this was before the merger of Manipur happened with the Union of India on the 15th of October 1949. The last king of Manipur, his name was Maharaja Bodha Chandra Singh. He was also well interested in the Wari tradition of Ramkatha. But uh, I think to attribute the survival of this art form till today exclusively to royal patronage would be wrong. Because uh, uh, I, I mentioned this few minutes back, the narrators of Wari Liba, they are invited by individuals on certain special occasions to perform, like during Swasti Puja, on the birth of a child, during Navratri, and also annual death anniversaries of elders in families. And this has been the practice always. And the performers, they are also invited for a month-long narration of the Ram Katha uh, during the annual Durga Puja celebrations. Various social organizations and as well as members of the communities, they collectively bear the expenses of these performances, uh, you know, thereby infusing a sense of collective patronization of this art form. A few artists belonging to the older generations, they talk in nostalgia about the times when each house of a locality contributed whatever they can in terms of fruits, in terms of flowers, labor, or even money for organizing Variliba performances in a full spirit of Vaishnava Bhakti devotion. So it is more inclined towards the skill and charm of the performers, the narrators who can mesmerize the audience with their art of storytelling, with their art of narration. And very often one can see a lot of the elderly ones in the audience shedding tears while they are listening to Hanuman's Bhakti towards Sri Ram or even at the plight of Sita in Ashokvan when intimidated by Ravan. Another important point that I would like to bring to light here regarding the significance of Variliba with reference to Ram Katha in Manipur and the cultural markers of the Manipuri Hindu society uh, is that information and notions about the set of beliefs uh, practices and value system associated with a particular community is communicated to the common masses through this medium. So, you know, sometimes we seek for reasons behind the prevalence of certain customs in a society. Why is this still prevalent? So, reasons behind the prevalence of certain customs in their society are also to be found embedded in the course of narrating these stories at an appropriate time through Variliba. Especially the values and customs associated with Sanatan Dharma, particularly of the Vaishnava Parampara, are communicated to the people with ample explanations and rules. In the words of an author, Manihar, uh, the Manipuri Ramayan, he has said that without doubt it is meant to be sung or recited. He has further added that the comparative simplicity in language, unrestrained flow of the narrative and its presentation in a local atmosphere stand out as some of the trademark features of this Ramayan. Uh, the construction of the storyline, uh, you know, it, was, it is also that it gives scope for the narrators to infuse, uh, divert, lengthen, or sometimes even shorten the story, which could be understood through the discourse on oral narration and the fluidity of this narration. Now, in the context of the Manipuri Ramayan and its oral rendering, one can notice the way how the story of the arrival of Hanuman at Lanka after crossing the ocean is expressed in the Sundarakanda episode. 
Now, in the textual version, the story simply mentions the arrival of Hanumanji on the shores of Lanka in the evening. But in the oral rendering through Variliva, it has been made into a kind of dramatic and vivid experience for the audience. And the oral narration goes something like this. Uh, the moment Ram Bhakta uh, Hanuman landed on the shores of Lanka, the entire Lanka felt a certain kind of tremor. Bhukam. And such the intensity of the tremor was that several buildings of Lanka collapsed immediately. And Ravan, the king, also fell rolling down from his majestic throne onto the ground. But he soon recovered himself and tried to stay calm and composed in the likeness of a great king. But he was quick to sense that there was some bad omen nearby and therefore he ordered his astrologers in an angry voice to find the cause of that sudden bhukam or that sudden tremor and as well as its remedy. So immediately, all the famous astrologers of Lanka, they hurried to the palace and begin. they began to consult their almanac among themselves. But they could not provide any satisfying answer for the cause of that earthquake. It was then that they advised Ravan to consult Vibhishana, his younger brother, who also happened to be a great astrologer. And the story goes on. Now, whatever I have spoken till now is a very simple structure of the narration. But by listening to the narration in an actual Variliba performance in Manipur, it is quite a mesmerizing experience, especially for those who haven't had this experience earlier. The way the narrator narrates the shaking of entire Lanka after the arrival of Hanuman, the toppling of Ravan from the throne, and also the awkward moment uh, of Ravan when he lays flat on the ground in front of his entire courtiers, they are all very, very fascinating. And this also caters to the, uh, the Hasya Rasa sentiment or humor related to the audience. And then the subsequent story involving Vib uh, Vibhishan turns towards a rather devotional uh, mode kind of a thing. Because uh, Vibhishan, sensing that a Ram Bhakta, that is Hanuman, has come to Lanka and that he will be blessed to have a glimpse of the Bhakta is beautifully narrated. So one sees that the seemingly rigid textual version is transcended into a uh, more flexible and presentable mode of narration, which also caters to the, uh, the taste, need, and uh, desires of the, uh, of the audience, uh, of the listeners. And it becomes uh, more of a direct interaction between the text and the audience uh, eventually uh, through the medium of the Variliba narrators. So Variliba operates in such a way that the process of dialogue between oral traditions and textual traditions uh, has always been in existence side by side in the Manipuri literature, in the Manipuri literary, religious and social uh, milieu. And this is facilitated by the characteristic attributes of the community who has produced and as well as uh, been successfully able to preserve these art forms in their own different and unique ways, opening up a completely new dimension of studying the involvement of the community in the act of uh, controlling and dissemination of their various literary traditions. Variliba and the Manipuri Ram Katha tradition is an example, uh, it's a wonderful example of an art form in which local elements of the Vaishnava Parampara and mighty Hindu traditions have assimilated into one another to become one and the same at the level of religion, literature, and culture. And uh, this reverence and respect for Sri Ram in the Manipuri society has percolated so deeply to the local level in such a manner that you know, in some places, uh, particularly uh, there is a village in the Bishenpur area. Uh, or it is also known as Bishnupur, uh, Sri Ram is worshipped as one of the Umang Lai's. Now, Umang Lai means, uh, we can understand it as a supreme deity. Umang Lai is a, a mighty Hindu word. So in this village in Bishnupur, district of Manipur, Sri Ram is worshipped as one of the Umang Lai's with offerings of uh, fruits, sweets and vegetables. Also on the occasion of the Lai Haroba festival of the mighty Hindus, 
traditional priests and priestesses known as uh, maibas and maibis in the local manipuri language they first chant an invocation to shri ram uh, before formally begin with the celebrations and this invocation goes like this ram krishna narayan hari he narayan ram krishna narayan hari he narayan uh, then i was uh, briefly mentioning about uh, describing about a festival which again invokes uh, shri ram uh, besides wari liba and this example of uh, lai haruba dance form this is the festival of yaosha or holi which is celebrated as holi in other parts of india it is known as yaosha in manipur it stands out as an important uh, festival of colors celebrated in manipur and like what is uh, you know in a way we can say that like durga puja represents the essence of bengali hindus and bengal as such uh, bihu represents the essence of assamese society assam so yaoshan represents the essence of the manipuri hindu society uh, yaoshan is a five day long event that is observed on the full moon day of uh, the month of lamda it is the last month of the mighty lunar calendar so it happens to be like either end of february or early march as per the english calendar around the same time as holi it is one of the most important festivals of the mighty hindus of manipur and uh, just like wari liba it is a form of uh, the storytelling tradition yaoshan represents a beautiful blend of sanatan hindu traditions infused with local elements and there are several such hindu festivals in manipur like kang rath yatra uh, there is another hekru hitongba which is a traditional manipuri boat race and even ningol chakoba for that matter which is celebrated around the same time as dipavali and bhaiya dooj shri ram is an integral and inseparable aspect of all these festivals and this is also i would say the underlying cultural unity of the beautiful land called bharat which binds each and every region i mean it is the character of ram which has bound each and every region from the north to the south and the west uh, to the northeast into one single territorial entity uh, now what is yaoshan and how is shri ram important to this, to this festival uh briefly let's go into the history of it first so originally yaoshan was celebrated in kangle park that is present day manipur commemorating the birth of pakhangba uh, i have mentioned about pakhangba earlier and he is worshiped as the presiding deity of the sanamahi faith system of the mighty hindus it was on this day that pakhangba was born at kangle park or the present day it is believed to be the area of the present day kangla fort in imphal uh, to lema rain and salai lain sidaba uh, in the earlier days uh, a separate house known as nao shang was built nao means baby or child and shang means house now this separate house was built from locally available raw materials for the delivery of a baby pakhangba was born at uh, this hut called nao shang and the celebration of yaoshan in manipur formally began from the day of burning of the naoshan that is the burning of the hut in which pakhangba was born among many sections of the manipuri hindus even today pakhangba is worshiped as an incarnation or an avatar of shri ram with the arrival of gaudiya vaishnavism in manipur and raja medungu uh, pamheba making it the state religion in 1717 ad there was a healthy intermixture of vaishnava traditions with the local mighty hindu customs of celebrating this festival now what does yaoshan signify chaitanya mahaprabhu as i've mentioned uh, who, who is worshiped as the founder of gaudiya vaishnavism in manipur is at the center of this festival in the morning of the very first day of yaoshan the murti of chaitanya mahaprabhu is placed in a small thatched hut which is made of bamboo and straws and it is especially constructed for the occasion this is then followed by the singing of bhajans and kirtans offerings of prasadam and also co collection of donations from the people of every locality by young boys and girls dressed in traditional manipuri attire uh now we all know that there is a ritual of the burning of holika dahan the ritual of holika dahan in other parts of the country 
uh, where uh, it it is burnt that uh, that structure which is constructed it is uh, it is burnt so there is a similar ritual here prevailing in manipur as well in the evening after sunset on the first day of yaushan the murti of chaitanya mahaprabhu is removed from the hut the hut is then set on fire amid chants of hey ram and hari bol and this ritual is known as yaushan methaba in the manipuri language the popular belief is that okay shri ram has destroyed the kingdom of ravan or lanka so this is the ritual known as yaushan methaba the burning of the hut which is also known as holika dahan in other parts of the country and in this ritual of yaushan methaba chants of hey ram hari bol hey ram hari bol they echo the air so uh, the belief the, uh, the belief is that uh, shri ram has destroyed the kingdom of lanka so victory uh, goodness righteousness has prevailed over evil and this ceremonial hut is being burnt in every hindu locality of manipur uh, as when as an annual reminder of the greatness of shri ram it is also believed that uh, vishnu Uh, when vishnu in his avatar as narasimha had killed the demon hiranyakya shipu so this is also uh, a, a reminder the burning of this hut is also a reminder of of both vishnu in his avatar as narasimha who had killed hiranyakya shipu the demon and ram uh, ram's destruction of lanka or uh, and uh, uh, ram's destruction of ravan and uh, lanka his kingdom now after this hut is burnt the ash that is produced from the burnt hut it is considered to be extremely auspicious it is collected and smeared by the devotees on their foreheads they also decorate the entrances to their homes with this ash by chanting the uh, chanting the cries of hari bol hey ram while decorating the entrances to their homes with this ash and formally yaushan methaba not just marks the beginning of the holy celebrations in manipur but also the advent of the spring season and this is followed by the rest of the festivities i happened to attend one of these uh, uh, rituals during uh, yaushan last year in 2021 and i thank the lady who took me uh, um, jayalakshmi and her family so <laughs> uh, so it was a wonderful experience altogether so you know, i think <laughs> that's it i don't know what else to speak i think i've spoken a lot although this is a huge topic uh, i think uh, it's it's over to you rajesh ji now <laughs> thank you thank you so much we learned so much about the art culture and the versions of ramayana found in uh, manipur that's kangle park and we also understood what oriliba means uh, you know and that's something new that we all gathered today and uh, also the burning of the hut and uh, the getting of the ashes from that place now i'm very i become very interested and curious <laughs> i want to get that ash and uh, you know apply it in our house also <laughs> if it is possible we really need to attend uh, one of the yaushan celebrations for that <laughs> in india you can't get it is it <laughs> we will yeah. try to and also the gaudi sampradaya uh, is very interesting because of the international society for krishna consciousness yes i am given to understand that it is inspired by the tradition founded by uh, you know saint madhvacharya of uh, udupi so there is you know there is a connect from one tradition to the other how it has traveled from the western coast to the eastern northeastern part of the country and uh, it's very very interesting i was what was really uh, you know amazing was you were able to completely recall all these things by heart it is not easy i fully understand that it is not easy and i think uh, and suppose that it is only because of the grace of lord rama and your interest Ma in Kamakya. that absolutely <laughs> today being a friday ma kamakya and also you spoke about the placing of a small uh, seat for hanuman ji 
whenever the recitation was taking place so that that tradition is a very national tradition <clears throat> they place a small plate for you know a seat for hanuman ji and sometimes they also place a plate of some fruits and there are stories where suddenly a monkey jumps into the place takes a fruit and runs away and and mm. that is not a very common feature in this part of the country there so many miracles associated with the hanuman associated with lord rama and also with the good governance that rama gave all of us and the value system which was brought in by rama into the country and this talking about this omens connected with the uh, ravan i have uh, you know that is something that is you know found uh, nationally in a number of places even the kamba ramayan which was written by kamba the famous uh, poet from tamil nadu is an adaptation there are some small uh, <clears throat> you know liberties that he has taken i suppose every version of the ramayan there is a bit of the liberty taken but nevertheless there is a rama there is a sita there is a hanuman there is a lakshman there is ravan ha huh. so this is same everywhere yeah <laughs> and also the manner in which things are taken forward in uh, kirtivas ramayan i had forgotten the very name for years you know <laughs> and i'm happy that uh, i could listen to that word today i'm sure <laughs> everybody else who are watching and who are going to watch will be very happy to listen to the manipuri or the kanglepa question of the ramayan and you also spoke about the vaishnavai tradition and how the vaishnavai tradition the old vaishnavai tradition the new vaishnavai tradition in the form of the gaudi sampraday and also the ramayan and everything else connected with the legend and all these rituals is yes. very very interesting so there are a lot of common features and something which are exclusive to that region we on behalf of varanda club are thankful and grateful to vyam for giving us this opportunity to use the platform and dr ankita datta for painstakingly you know researching and coming back every time with one version or one state connected with ramayana in the northeastern part of india the ramayana traditions of the purvotar bharat are continuing I would love to, to uh, cover nagaland next <laughs> i really nagaland is one state where they say it's uh, completely nothing to do with the hinduism or nothing to uh, do with sanatan nothing Sanatana. to do with ram yes yes true they talk like that you know true. people talk like that and uh we and sometimes since we have also not visited these places it becomes very difficult for us to you know understand mm. and we just go by the reports of uh, uh some of the journalists and some people from the t- television media and uh, the so called uh, pseudo secularists who are found in the social media and it is finally left to generous speakers and scholars like dr ankita datta to share the truth with us and for this all of us are very grateful may lord rama give you every single opportunity to unravel the mysteries connected with sanatan dharma in the northeastern part of the country and may your tribe rise and uh, looking forward to hear more thank from you thank you so much thank you so, thank much, you so much thank you. You. thank you thank you thank you so much thank you